great morning. Great morning to everybody. Nicole Mitchell Griffin back at you. That's Nicole's Bill with two E's. I am your Mind Style Professor. Happy day 176 of 2019, right? Almost Q3. Are you ready? Are you ready for Q3? <laughs> okay. We are going to get into our conversation. Come through when you sign in. Please let me know where you are watching from in the world. If you're watching the replay, please let me watch. Let me know you watch the replay. Okay, so let's get into this conversation here. Y'all know that I say eight, but it really depends, you know, cause I work out downstairs sometimes with my trainer. So that kind of depends. Hey, don't wish for it, work for it. Whether or not I'm up here or not. So sometimes that's, you know, anywho, let's get into it today. So to plan or no, <laughs> to plan or wait on the Lord. Tell me what you think about that. Cause I have heard that forever and ever and ever. Well, I ain't lived that long, but one more ever. Tell me what you think about that. I have heard that several times. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on a word for the Lord. I'm waiting on a word from the Lord. 66 books. But still waiting on the word. I ain't trying to be funny. I'm serious. I'm serious about this dialogue today because I believe, hey, Brother Quincy, I believe that so many people are held up because i'm gonna say it oh god i'm gonna say it okay so many people are held up because of all of the cliches that are given out as scripture texts they're given out as rules they're nowhere in the bible but they're given out as rules and we teach them and we preach them and we live them out and we bring them to pass and they become self-prophecies and they're wrong they're fake they hold us up that's what I think that's just <laughs> what I think you know I'm waiting on the Lord okay so you ain't gonna do nothing in between in the meantime though considering that hey sister Sarah how are you considering that the text tells us that <clears throat> he already knows the plans that he has for us so if he knows the plans that he has for us and the plans are about us, it would appear that we're the ones who don't know what the plans are. I'm just asking, what you think? That's what it appears to me. That was the revelation that I got. And with me being, with my background being in nursing, there's no way that I can take care of a patient, any patient, whether it's for five minutes, 50 minutes, or five days, there's no way I can take care of a patient without having what's called a care plan or a plan of care. Or it, and really, it's a plan of action. There's no way that I can do that. So share with me what you think. What is your opinion about that? When presented with challenges in your life, come to a crossroad in your life and have you ever found yourself saying, I don't know what to do. I'm waiting on the Lord. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you've heard it before. Tell me what you think. Dialogue. Jump in. Let me know. Because what I have heard for many, many years is I'm waiting, but it has been an excuse. I have heard I need, what's the word? Um, oh, God. Confirmation. I need confirmation that this is what I'm supposed to do. This is the way to go. This is my next move. That's what I've heard. Now, let me say this, and I say this often, but I want to say it early on while we just not even a mile in. I want to say this. 
I'm not speaking from a position of being an expert or a person who has arrived. I am your sister in the process. I'm sharing with you as I journey along and hopefully we can collaborate together. So I'm just sharing with you my conversations. I want them to come through strong and powerful. So share with me what your conversation is. Let's dialogue, what do you think? I'm saying from a position of understanding, from a position of growth, never from a position of I have arrived and I have it all together, never. However, when I know something that has worked, then I'm gonna work that thing that I know. So, in knowing what the plans are, um, Jeremiah 29, he talks about what the plans are. He says four things, plans to prosper you. No harm, future, and hope. Plans to prosper you, no harm, future, and hope. And of course, when we think of prosperity, especially when we come from being, I won't say it, indoctrinated behind the four walls, stuck and can't read nothing else and can't get nobody else's opinion and can't get nothing else in but what somebody else done told you. Mm. When we come from that position, we think prosperity is limited to money. When prosperity is not limited, but it's abundant and it's expansive to all eight areas of wellness in our lives. I know I'm talking, shoot. I know I'm talking. <laughs> Woo, prosperity, let's replace that with abundance. Abundance is expansive in all eight dimensions of wellness in our lives. Emotionally, physically, intellectually, occupationally. What did I say physically, socially, financially, environmentally, emotionally, spiritually? I'll get them all, but it's eight of them. And until we look at, and I'm gonna be stuck on this for a while, until we look at where we are, where we are. Hey, sister, yes, my, that's my goal, that's my goal. Help me out, help me out. So we look at where we are. Where are you at? Find your dot in your path. Where are you? When you go to the mall, you don't know where you at? Where you go? To the directory and what you look for. You look for the dot that says you are here. Where are you? You got to find out where you are at before you can determine where you're going. So before you can say, I'm waiting on the Lord, even that statement alone, I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, how about while, while waiting, because that's a loaded word, while waiting, because let me tell you what I have heard for years, how it's been explained under the carpet or explained away to me is while you're waiting, you're in service, like you're a servant. I've even seen preachers put like a, a napkin over their arm, like you're a waiter and you're serving on the Lord. And that's good. Let me say this. Let me say this. <laughs> Just let me say it. I am your elevated mind style professor. So while on that last level, that napkin trip on the arm, that might have worked. Since we elevating our mind, can we just, can we take that napkin off your arm and wipe your face with it and say, okay, let's move on, let's elevate our mind. While, <laughs> while I am waiting on the Lord, because the Bible does say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up on wings as an eagle, all of that. So there is some benefit in me waiting on the Lord, but we need to read the backdrop of that. And I ain't even gonna go into it, but there's a backdrop. So when you know the history behind, when you know the text before and the text after, then things make more sense than to just pull that one text out and try to give somebody that as a meal when it was really meant to be an appetizer. I know I'm talking. Somebody tell me I'm talking. That was meant to be an appetizer. That wasn't meant to be the whole meal. 
So now, can we move on and get the whole meal and stop getting bits and pieces? Like, we just getting appetizers and we just waiting and we can't know what's going on and God is so high and he's great big and he ain't gonna reveal to me, but in the next breath, we'll turn around and say, the Holy Spirit knows all things here, bring all things back to your remembrance. So is he gonna bring it back or is he not gonna bring it back? Is he gonna help you do all things? Can I do all things through Christ or I can't do all things through Christ? It's like this up, down, in and out dichotomy of trying to understand. And it's a wonder, no wonder why there's so much confusion when it comes to really just getting a sound plan for your life while trying to understand it from a biblical aspect. And I'm an advocate of ensuring, and this is new for me, because I ain't even trying to come off like, oh yeah, this is how it's being, because it's not. I am an advocate of ensuring that we can eat and live one text real deep, rooted, as opposed to back in the day, knowing a whole bunch for the purpose of impressing somebody, for the purpose of being able to have conversation, for the purpose of being able to, uh-oh, uh for the purpose of being able to dialogue with other people. I don't know, for the purposes of whatever, as opposed to just living it. Can we live one text? real deep, deep rooted, as opposed to a whole bunch of texts. So today we're talking about the plans. Should you plan or no? <laughs> as my daughter say, oh no. Should you plan or no? Are we planning? Do we know that it is for the purposes of prosper? No harm, no evil, and hope and a future. Do we know that? If you don't know, now you know. Ain't that a song? <laughs> okay, so now you know. So, as I continue on in my studies, this right here, this was so good. <laughs> this was so good. So look here. The plans, it's, it's Proverbs 25, 21, 21. The plans <laughs> of the diligent, lead to profit surely as haste leads to poverty <sighs> y'all know that's good somebody high five me or something plans of the diligent lead to profit again when we hear the word profit and prosperity especially when you've been locked behind the four walls and you're taking the word of somebody who has the mic and Oh, I want to say it so bad. <laughs> and that person hasn't gone into further study outside of the scripture text. They don't feel the need to go read something else. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> See, I address old belief systems that no longer serve me. And when I address them, it's like, Nicole, you're saying this. But that's not what we believe. We believe this. And I'm addressing it like, no, I don't. I don't believe that anymore. And the reason why I don't believe it is because, number one, I've tried and tested it. Number two, I studied for myself. And number three, I've kept my mouth shut for so long, believing the, believing the lie that... You don't say things against the man and woman of God when really I'm not saying anything against the man and woman of God. I'm not saying anything about any man and woman of God about what they preach. I'm not saying anything about them. What I am saying is this. I am your elevated mind style professor. My name is Nicole Mitchell Griffin and that's Nicole spelled with two E's. My job is to kick your aspiration to the next level because I believe that an elevated mind style creates an elevated lifestyle. And so if in your life right now, you are not pleased with the results that you are getting in your life, you have to look at the behaviors and your actions to see why you're getting the results. And your actions and your behaviors are all based on your belief. 
And if you don't like the action, you don't like the behavior, you don't like the results that you are getting, you have to look at, hey, Sabarba, so you have to look at your belief system. And if you say, I don't like this result, then you go backwards. What's the action? What's the behavior? And then why do you do that? And it's rooted in your belief system. So if you don't like the results you're getting, <laughs> it's the belief system. And you gotta address the belief system. And oftentimes that means doing an assessment of yourself and saying, why do I believe this way? I grew up like this. You know, my father told me money don't grow on trees. So you hold money in your pocket. You can't save none because you're spending it because we got a scarce and impoverished mentality. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Come on, we gotta raise five more hundred dollars. Come on, come on, we need two more hundred dollars. Come on, come on. Y'all know I'm telling, y'all know I am telling the truth. When you look back and see where your belief system has come from, I bet you nine times out of 10, it has come from someone who has raised you, who has contributed to your thought pattern, who has contributed to uh, forming your philosophy. Hey, hey. And if we do not address how we think, check this out. Check this out. Listen to this. We wash our clothes, right? We mop the floor. We clean out the tub. We do all of these cleaning things so that we can use it again. So why then, oh my God, why then, why do we not clean up our minds and remove all the dirt and all of the belief systems that are no longer serving us so we can use it again? Whew. Mm, mm, mm. Why? Why we don't do that? Because some of the beliefs that we have, the values that we have, let me, let me say this. Some of the beliefs and the values that we have take our self, self confidence away. Don't allow us to build up self confidence because they create negative chatter in our heads when we decide to do something that is outside of our comfort zone. The reason why it's so hard and I'm speaking from experience, it's so hard because I want to put a new action in place and I want to start doing something new, but I haven't addressed what I believe. And if I don't address what I believe, my actions are not going to stick. And therefore I won't have any new behaviors because they're not rooted in a new belief. Y'all know I'm talking. I ain't got cash out, but that right there needed an offering. I don't need no organ. <laughs> I'm telling you what I'm telling you. We will attempt to do new things by a physical action, but we have not addressed the belief system, our values, what we really and truly think. And we're scared to say it outside of our mouths. I'm telling you the truth. I'm the first one to stand up and put up both hands. We're scared to say it outside of our mouths. And that is the thing. When the word goes out, it will go out and accomplish that which it was meant to do. And it will not return void. So if I say I'm going to be diligent in this plan right here. Okay. What does that mean? Please collect it for me. Don't, don't wish for it, work for it. She has um, Cash App, I don't have it, but please know that, um, yeah, she got that. She got, <laughs> look here, cause I know, I know it's a good word. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Now don't go out here and be talking, saying nothing crazy. I like to have fun, we, you can do that. When you done renewed your mind, I, I, yeah, we can have fun. Okay, so look here, so, Diligent is going to be our word for the rest of the year. We about to hit into Q3. So what are your plans for Q3? I wanna invite you to align with an accountability community. 
okay i want to invite you to do that because this way you will then have to speak to an accountability partner now you don't have to get you one but i'm just saying i got one i got several and this will help you to move along your plans for q3 and q4 somebody gonna say what is q3 and q4 quarter three quarter four because we're on day 176 of the year okay so i'm inviting you to align with an elevated mind style community where the whole purpose of building community is so that we can commune or come together and elevate one another we can operate inside of our purpose we don't have to wait on other people we can find out what the plans are for our lives and move in purpose work move in serving other people it's plenty of you you got books inside of you you should have been writing i'm one of them i'm one of them i'm one of them i got daily accountability where i'm writing this book and the tripped out thing is while i was writing one book do you know that another one jumped out of me? I got two pieces of paper. I'm writing on this one and another one jumps out. I'm writing on this one and another one jumps out. Don't tell me if you prime that pump. If you prime the pump. Look, if some of y'all old enough to know what that means. <laughs> if you start doing some things, then some things will start to do you. So when you start doing some things, <laughs> you'll start to get feedback. So listen, the community is www.thecommunity.com. That's T-H-E-E community.com. www.thee community.com. The community.com. What does that stand for? The E community. The Elevated Mind Style community. And the whole purpose is to come together so we can guard our eyes, guard our ears, and be in and on purpose. Be in and on purpose. Did you just talk about it, Sarah? <laughs> what did you talk about? Put something in the comment. Let me know. What was you talking about? She said she was talking about this this past weekend. Here's the thing. I believe, it's just my belief, and don't. And if I find a text, I'll let you know. But here's my belief. I believe this. We are so backed up with our gifts and our talents, and our focus has not been to pull out our gifts and talents. We are so backed up. We operate in such a spirit of fear. It's so much going on in the news. You turn on the news, you can't even watch it because the first five, six, seven minutes is all about who got shot, fires here, somebody stealing somebody or whatever. So that's going in our ear gates, going in our eyes. You come on social media, it's a whole bunch of booty shaking going on, a whole bunch of people killing people and the police and just a whole bunch of stuff. Let me tell you what Dr. Anderson said, Dr. David Anderson. Oh, this is so good right here. Let me tell you what he said. He said that if we had a million dollars worth of life insurance on ourselves, then all that shooting would stop because the insurance companies would be affected by paying. Let's take it up higher. The corporations that back politics would then start to lose money if all our black men that got shot ended up their families having to be paid out a million dollars worth of life insurance. I believe it just assures my name is Nicole Mitchell Griffin. That's the code spell with two E's. I am your elevated mind style professor. I'm telling you, if every time they shot somebody and they had to pay out a million plus dollars, they cut that mess out. They cut that out. I ain't even gonna get on David Anderson because I really love him. Look him up. Dr. David Anderson, he'll tell you in a minute. He got an honorary doctorate, <laughs> but he is the bomb. Let's get back to our point. Hey, Mosh, fear is not an option. Faith over fear every day, every day. So look here, for those of you who are just joining in, we are talking about to plan or not, to plan or not. 
We plan for everything else. We plan for trips. We plan for family reunions. We plan, look, if we can really have a Christmas dinner, we plan how we gonna clean up the house. In your mind you say, I'm gonna clean up the kitchen first, then I'm gonna clean up the living room, then I'm gonna clean up this. Then we plan, well, hey, Shell, uh, uh, glad you decided to grace us with your presence since you've been on tour for the last um, 29 months. You know I was in need of some issues. Ain't that something when your friends just get blessed and they just go on and do what the Lord has called them to do. They go on and meet other people. They go on and start traveling the world. And because they being blessed and highly favored, they just put you down. Ain't that something? <laughs> Thank God. You know I celebrate you, girl. You know I do. Talking with a playwright who wrote two plays about growing up, she thought no one would want to hear her story. She said, we all have a story and need to tell them. Sarah, we all have a story and need to tell them. Now, you know, if you don't speak another word today, you done spoke it today. It's the truth. We do. That's right, Ma. 29 months. She been gone. She been gone. Yes. Hey, Jane Moorhead. Listen, y'all, Jane Moorhead was my nursing student, and I think she had a serious um, brain issue. I'm not sure, Jane, I don't want to tell your story. If you had a stroke and came out the hospital and is in therapy, and thank God she's walking and back to some normalcy. So we give God praise for you, girl. I don't want to tell your story, but I will. But I don't want to tell it because I want I want to make sure it's told and true. So look here. Let's get back to what we're talking about today. My whole point of this, to plan or not, here's the thing about planning. When we decide that we want to plan, we got to get real about where we are. We will do a lot of things in regards to planning. We will plan when we get ready to have a family reunion. Plan when we get ready to do Thanksgiving dinner. We'll plan how we're going to clean up. We'll plan what clothes we're going to wear. We'll plan all kind of stuff because we like the results. Get me? Okay, now, listen to this. Listen. If we do not like the results that we are getting in a specific area of our life, and I mentioned doing an assessment in all eight dimensions of our lives, which we will do in our Elevated Mind Style community, so you are welcome to join. Listen, when you do an assessment and find out where you are, just like when you go to the mall and there's a dot that says you are here, you need to find out your dot. And one of the first things we have got to do is address the belief system that's backing the result that we no longer want. And oftentimes we have these results that we don't want and we say, I don't want, I don't like this anymore. I don't like the fact that um, I can't get up on time. I don't like the fact that I'm late. But then in the next breath, turn around and say, well, that's just me, I'm always late. That's a belief system. It needs to be addressed. Why are you always late? Was your family always late? Did somebody tell you it was okay for you to be late? What if God was late sending that oxygen? Boy, <laughs> you get up in the morning blue face like, whoop, sorry. God say, whoop, sorry about that. I was late with that oxygen. That ain't cool. I'm just saying, if we gonna elevate our mind style, that's all I'm about. It's for good, great people who wanna elevate. Okay, so if this ain't deep enough for you, click off. I'm saying, in every area of our lives, if we wanna go higher, we gotta go deeper. Y'all know that's good. I don't care what you say. If we want to go higher, we got to go deeper. It ain't even about 2011. That ain't even a number, is it? <laughs> 2011, 2011 scriptures that we going to know. We going we to concentrate on this one, and we going to live it out the rest of the year. One, the word for the rest of the year is diligent. And I'm going to bring to you all the various definitions and synonyms background because y'all know they made me take latin so y'all gonna benefit from y'all gonna listen since i had to take it y'all gonna listen i'm gonna talk about this latin <laughs> so when we talk about the word diligent we're talking about being thorough thorough so before we start talking about i'm gonna wait on the lord 
to do something. I already addressed that. I ain't even going back. Before we start talking about waiting on the Lord to do something, hey, Sister Shannon, how about let's do our part and believe that the word of God shall not return void, but will accomplish that which it was sent out to do. And while we're in the midst of action, while we're doing the word, that what it is sent out to accomplish will return back and we'll just kind of meet somewhere in the middle. How about that? Can we agree to, can we agree to that? Or is that too practical? Is that too, maybe I should have spoken in tongues when I said that. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me, okay. So check it out. <laughs> here's, here's what I believe. This is just my belief system. This is what just came to me. And let me tell you how this came to me. I remember being behind the four walls here. The Lord will make a way somehow. Now let me say this, I believe God is a way maker. I believe he is a way maker. I believe he is a mind regulator. I believe that he will fix your mind. I believe he will do it and will leave us sitting and saying, Dag, I don't even know how that happened. I, how did he do it? But you best believe he had a plan. If he's going to create the world, separate light from dark, if he's going to create the world with a plan, why then would he not fix my life situations with a plan, especially when the text tells me, I know the plans I have for you, which means that I don't know him. He knows the plans. He has the plans. The only person missing is, can you say me? Me, 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 me. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Me, 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 me. I'm the only one that's missing, right? Which means it's my responsibility to be diligent, right? Proverbs tells me, Proverbs 21, plans of the diligent lead to profit. As sure as haste leads to poverty. And I will say this, because, right, me, because we live in such a microwave society, we are overstimulated. The news, the, the internet, is so much stuff going on. We want stuff now, 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 and right now, right? But the text tells me haste leads to poverty. And I believe that's why we have such a, we have such a poverty, scarcity mentality because we want it hastily and not diligently. I'm just telling you what the text say. I'm just telling you what the text say. Uh, well, Jeremiah 29 is my, I know the plans. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans. And then um, Proverbs 25, I don't remember which one because since I ain't locked behind no four walls, I ain't got to pretend like I know where every scripture text is. 25 in Proverbs. <laughs> it's early on in Proverbs 21. Somewhere early, like three, four, five, somewhere up there in that verse. So look, the word for the rest of this year, diligent. Okay, so here's your action steps. Because we done been all over the place. Here's your action steps. Okay, your action step is this. We need to do an assessment of where we are. Find your dot. Where are you? Where are you? And we're doing this in our Elevated Mind Style group. That is www.theelevated, no, www.thecommunity.com. It's really the E community. And so when you put two E's together, it makes the sound of the instead of the. Oh, God. Thecommunity.com. <laughs> and so we need to do an assessment of where we are in the dimensions of our lives. And then, here we go, pick out what dimension you wanna work on. I believe when we're behind the four walls, one of the things we attempt to do is we scramble to do everything and then we don't do nothing. We all over the place. At least when I was in there, nursing home, jail, kids, this, that, and the other. Let me tell you what I've been called to work on. I've been called to work on mind style. What does that mean? Style is the way we think. Style is a way. So your style of dress is how you dress, right? 
the style of cooking is how you cook, right? So your mind style, which is a word that I made up because since I got a degree, I might as well use it for something, <laughs> is the way we think, right? And so we need to come up, elevate it, elevate it mind style. We need to come up. We need to come up and we need to adopt that I am superior to inferior behavior and low action. To, to even, check this out. This is a stretch, but I'm gonna say it because we have all contemplated this. The ecommunity.com, yes, this is Sarah, that's correct, thank you. We, oh, and I wanna invite all of y'all to prayer tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I'll put the, um, the phone number in the comments when I finish. Prayer, 7 a.m., it ain't no long drawn out prayer. It's the word, bam, and a prayer, bam, and go on with your life. So if you deep, you super califragilistic, you got a mat next to Gabriel and Michael, this ain't the prayer for you. So look, this is prayer for good, great people who want to elevate their mind style because I believe that an elevated mind style creates an elevated lifestyle. So look here, I don't lost my train of thought. I was gonna say something about the way we think. I can't remember. Okay, in the elevated mind style community, we're gonna go over the dimensions, right? And then you need to figure out what area you want to work on. And so here's the areas that I'm called to assist people in, and that is mind style. Oh, that's where I was at. Mind style, thank y'all. <laughs> mind style, the way we think. Our intellect, right? Accountability. Connecting with people, being accountable. Because we talk a bunch of snoo about what we gonna do when we together, when we hyped, and then we leave and no one holds us accountable and we do the God knows my heart deal and all of that mess. And, and I don't know, waiting on the Lord, let's, come on. Let's elevate, because I am superior to inferior thinking and low action. Let's, let's elevate. Remember, I'm your sister in the process. I ain't arrived. I'm just sharing what has been revealed to me. I don't know everything, and I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing. All right? So look. So <clears throat> you're going to pick out what it is that you want to work on. I, intellect financial, business, purpose, health. That's it. So if don't none of them attract you, I ain't your girl. You can still come to conversation come through, <laughs> but that's what the community is about for now. And who knows, the Lord may elevate me and take me into another dimension and help me work on emotions. I don't know, but I just believe that when we work in the dimension of intellect, it will trickle down to your emotions. It'll trickle down to your social behavior. It'll trickle down to your environment and what we're doing. I, that's what I believe. So that's my focus. So if you're a person who says, I'm in my purpose, I'm cool, I don't need no help. That's cool, but you don't need no help. I'm going to tell you what the words say. And I may not be the person to help you, so don't feel like I'm trying to wave my flag. Get you some help from somebody. The Bible say that the plans prosper when they have wise counsel. So everybody has a plan. You just may not know what it is. And having wise counsel helps to bring the plan to life. So please seek you some wise counsel if you operating in purpose and you on 10, you on fire, you saving lives and you really um, are doing your purpose. I and mean, I'm not being funny. You really are seriously inside of your purpose work and you got it going on and you know that you a leader. Then my question to you is why you not leading? Because I'm gonna tell you this. I believe there's two type of leaders. There's a leader for followers and there's a leader for leaders. And I know I'm a leader for leaders. And let me tell you why I know, because I want people to be self-sufficient. I want to give you the information. I want to give you the hows. I want to share with you what it is that I know so you can be self-sufficient. So you then can go do your purpose work in the earth. Who I know that I'm not a leader for followers who constantly need assistance, who constantly are begging for help, who constantly are, that ain't it. 
the people I rock with, they leaders, they want a plan, they got a plan, they trying to move in action, and maybe they stumble on a roadblock, and they just need a cheerleader in the background to say, come on, you got this, here's what we gonna do, this what, that's, that, those are the people that I rock with. So I'm a leader for leaders. So if that's you, you wanna get down, come on into the community, come on into the community. Now let me tell you this, cause you know, <laughs> there's a plan. <laughs> There's a plan when you come into the community. And the reason for that is so that we can elevate. That's what it is. So accountability. So I'll give you an example. I'm writing this book. I told you I birthed out a couple more while I was writing, right? I have an accountability partner. We have to communicate and say, what are we doing? What did you do? Did you write it? Did you send that email? What's up? It ain't about God knows the plans I get to it. No. We on point with this thing. We about to go into quarter three. Come on. So what is it you supposed to be doing? Since there's plans for you, are you supposed to be writing that book? Are you supposed to have you, are you supposed to start your own business? Look, everybody ain't meant to be an entrepreneur, so don't leave your job and start your own business if that ain't what you're called to do. Keep your job. You need an investor while you're starting your business. <laughs> so you, you work, you start your business and work alongside all right don't don't do that stuff that they used to tell us back in the 90s step out on faith cut that out then you line and don't want to answer the phone when the bill collectors call <coughs> right walking in fake not faith fake check this out if we walking in fake how are we gonna get blessed the blessing come it don't even know where to land because you ain't real Cause you fake here go a real blessing and here go a fake person blessing just up in the air like i don't know where she at i don't know <laughs> all right <laughs> that's why i think i probably will never be invited back into a pool pit again <laughs> i'll have to build my own all right so that's the word for the day y'all i want to invite you to elevated mind style community it's www.thecommunity.com yes sarah that's correct and I want to invite you to prayer tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll put the comment, I mean, yeah, put the phone number and everything down there. And our word for this year is diligent. Here are our steps. We need to find where we are, decide what area we're going to work in, and identify what results that we are getting that we do not like anymore so we can address the belief system. Walking in fake, girl, yeah. Yeah, cut that out. Walking in fake. Mm. I was getting ready to say something, but I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it, I ain't gonna do it. So, diligent, that's the word, all right? So I appreciate y'all rocking with me every morning. Those who are watching the replay, I appreciate you rocking with me because y'all know that balance doctor and my neurologist, you know, they all just want to give me medicine and have me to do this, that, and the other. Last week was a rough week, so I appreciate y'all sending me prayers. And somebody sent me prayers on the email and text me and all of that. Check this out. Check on your strong friend. Check on your strong friend, because I know I'm one of the strong friends. So check on your strong friend, right? So I appreciate you rocking with me, because if I showed y'all the picture that I'm aiming for, see, that's the thing. Right, you scared or not? See, that's the thing. Let me tell you about this elevated mind style community. In the elevated mind style community, we can talk about the pictures that you don't want to share with people because they ain't down, they don't believe you. We can talk about those dreams that's real big, that scare you when you dream them. Let me tell you why your dreams are so big. Because dreams come from God and God is big. So you expect to get a little bitty dream? Hmm. We talking about God, not man. I was going to say something so smart, Alec, but I ain't going to do it. <laughs> so check it out. <laughs> That's right. Check on your strong friend. That's right. My strong friend, boy. Whew, I tell you. <laughs> Woo. We thank God. We just thank God. Y'all, come on, let's pray real quick. We thank God for holding a space of healing. We thank God that we are diligent in your word. We thank God 
that for the rest of quarter three and quarter four, we are going to be diligent. We are going to look at ourselves, examine ourselves and see where we are. And we're going to be honest about it. We're going to admit it where we are and where we are not. And then we're going to admit where we want to go. What are the things that we want to do? How do we want to see our families? How do we want to live? What's the legacy that we want to leave? What's the relationships that we want to have? How do we want to see our children? God, some of us have kids and we thank you. We speak it, in a, in, we speak it into existence and we thank you, God, that our children are walking in their purpose and we relieve ourselves of the guilt, the idea, the negative chatter that we didn't do something right. God, we lift our hands to you and we worship you and we know, Father, Father, that no good thing will you withhold from us if we live up right we live right before you and we know father that everything that you made is good so we know all of our children are good and they are in the right place and we release them to you right now in the name of Jesus they will not be a hindrance we will not walk in fear we will not walk in worry we will not walk in confusion in the name of Jesus we believe you because you are righteous God you are a father who gives good to his children we honor you, Lord. We honor you. We worship you. We acknowledge you for being good, for being great, for being honest. When you talk to us, even when we don't want to hear it, we thank you that you even address our feelings. You even address our emotions. And we thank you, Father, that you have even given me the strength and the confidence to take the tape finally. God, take the tape finally off of my mouth and say those things that you have been speaking to me year after year. And I've been walking in fear, not wanting to say it because I've been concerned about what other people think. But I thank you, Father, that I know all confidence comes from you and confidence is based in belief. And I thank you, Father, that you've had me to address my belief system. And now you're giving me the diligence to help other people address the belief system so you can get the results that we desire so we can be in the plan that God has for us. Thank you, Jesus. Plans of prosperity, plans of no harm, no harm. We should not be walking in fear. We should not be walking in worry. Father, we thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We should not be walking in fear. We should not be walking in worry. Don't you leave your house today in fear. Don't you leave your house today in worry anxiety we come up against anxiety right now in the name of jesus some people walk around and just be anxious fearful anger mad that is fear god has not called us to that he has called us to have the plans that bring us prosperity prosperity is abundance in all the areas of our lives we think of prosperity as money yes with that too but in addition to that memories memories money allows us to make great memories money determines whether we go on a weekend vacation a week's vacation or a month's vacation blink blink it allows us to make longer memories <sighs> plans for hope and plans for future and i believe that that's what god has called me to and I'm just now being honest about it. So I appreciate y'all riding with me. I appreciate y'all. Hopefully I'll see y'all in the morning. Replay viewers, I hope to see you at 7 a.m. on prayer. I won't see you, but I'll hear you. And if you late, you might miss it because we ain't even going, it ain't even going to hold that long, right? It ain't even going to hold that long. Because, you know, when Jesus used to pray for people, he used to be like, come out. And then that would be it. Y'all remember this time? Okay, I'm done, y'all. Y'all need to go. I'm silly now. Okay, y'all remember this time when <laughs> when this chick was in Bible and she was <laughs> she was she was messing up when Paul and them was <laughs> going through the crowd and she was um she was interfering, right? And Paul let her fool around for a little while, interfering, and finally he just went over to her like, "Come on out," and. But what he didn't know, or maybe he did know, is that she actually belonged to some people and she was purposefully out there working the community. You know, like a fortune teller working the community. So of course, when he shut all that down, it took their money away. Then they took Paul to, to the people in politics, like dude messing with the money. Okay, y'all. 
that's my funny for today. I thank y'all for riding with me. Please leave me in the comments, what did you get from this? What's your takeaway for today? Remember our word is diligent for Q3 and Q4. I really, really, you have no idea. I appreciate y'all walking with me. And I will see you on Conversation Come Through on Thursday. Conversation Come Through on Thursday, which is also Thankful Thursday where we express gratitude and prayer tomorrow at 7 a.m. and join the ecommunity.com www.thecommunity.com the ecommunity.com I am Nicole Mitchell Griffin that's the cold spill with two E's I'm your elevated mind style professor peace and I will see you on the next video please let me know how this video resonated with you today let me know in the comments write back because I do go back and read them and I know it's a delay when you're trying to write all right diligent for the rest of the year diligent see you on the next video my takeaway is to be diligent yes thorough 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 that's the first definition thorough 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 see you on the next video